This statue is a gift to Medjugorje from, by a family from South Korea. Mother, a devout person, the one who really prayed a lot, married to an unbeliever, and their son was very sick. As a wealthy person's family, they could afford to go to any part of the world, to any doctor, but every time the response would be the same. We can control it, we can improve life, but we cannot heal the boy. That was it for father, who was an unbeliever, but mother never gave up. She came on a pilgrimage to Medjugorje. She spent a week praying really hard, and uh, nothing happened. When group was about to leave, she said to them, God bless you, safe trip. You are leaving, but me not. I stay here. She stayed over a month. Another group came from South Korea. One of those days, a month after, she asked somebody to stay with her son in the room. And then she went to the cross hill, and she said, at the fourth station, Jesus meets his beloved mother. And I was kneeling there, crying, and trying to find the answer. And then I, for the first time in my life, really felt deep within my heart that Mary is my mother, and that she lived on earth, that she had a son, she had son, and her son was suffering, and he died before her own very eyes. And then if, if, when you walk further along the cross, uh, cross hill, then, or up the cross hill, better to say, at the 12th station, Jesus dies on the cross, and you see Our Lady embracing the cross. And this Korean mother said, that's when I knew what I'm supposed to do. Follow Our Lady, embrace the cross, and offer it up to God for His glory. Yes, my son is sick, but I have to help him carry the cross. She went back home, <laughs> a shock. The boy is totally healed. So his, her heart was healed. The visionary Yaakov, he always says, first we need to pray for the healing of the heart. Then when we have our heart healed, then even physical healings may happen, if it's God's will, of course. So this family, you can imagine father who was an unbeliever, who changed upside down, like, without being aware of that God exists, you know, like, it was so evident his own son was healed. No doctors, no medicine, no science, nothing, you know, but God. And at the age of 44, I contracted cancer. And the uh, most intense thing I ever heard was when the doctor told me I had renal cell carcinoma. And yet, even with that, doubt, that thought of dying, the cancer was the best thing that ever happened to me because it brought me back to God, someplace I had been away from. There's no treatment for metastatic renal cell carcinoma. There is no chemo, there's no radiation, there aren't, there aren't even clinical trials anymore. They're trying different things, but there's nothing out there except, except extraction, and you can only take so many pieces. And he said, you have less than 5% chance to survive. So I was so devastated and so depressed that I could barely put one foot in front of the other. The weight was palpable. I could literally feel weight on me, pushing me down. It was September 4th to the 10th that we were in Medjugorje, and my surgery was scheduled for September 14th. So we really went over there in desperation, and we really didn't have much time. And the first thing we did was we went to St. James Church, which is the church in the center of town. And to the left of that church, of the boxes. And in those boxes are the confessionals. And Robbie, Kevin, and I hadn't been to confession in over 15 years, I'm sorry to say. So we went to confession, and when I left the confessional, the anxiety and the depression that had been weighing so heavily upon me completely disappeared. I felt weightless, free as a bird. And then we went into um, Mass. And the Mass is so crowded with people and they sing with such conviction that your soul is lifted into heaven. It really felt that way. And I felt like, wow, I'm in the right place in Medjugorje. The next part of the trip, we decided we're gonna go up to Mount Krishovitz, which is Cross Mountain, 1933. They built this 33-ton cross at the top of an impossible mountain to get to. But that's what they did, and it overlooked the entire valley. So we were going up there, as many pilgrims do. It was a rainy day, and they told us not to go because it gets very slippery, the rocks do, when it, when it rains because so many people have been there. But we were stubborn, we went up anyway. And on the way up, I felt a pain in my lung that I could put my finger on. And I said, man, this is getting worse. And it was a burning, that, and I couldn't understand it. But we got to the top, 
And it was unusual when we got there because no one was there, just three of us. And we were yelling to God for healing. We were praying, we were weeping, we were embracing. Things guys don't usually do in public around here. We were doing it, you know, uninhibitedly. We were just really asking God, begging. We came down off the mountain and uh, I called Judy. They called their wives and they could sense in our voices that something was going on. I said, I don't know what's going on over here, but you know, call the doctor. Because four days after I land, they're gonna take out my lung. Call the doctor and see if he'll do another CT scan. She called the doctor. The doctor's secretary called me back and on the voice message said, Mr. Boyle, we know you're in Medjugorje. We know why you're there. That's a beautiful thing. But the fact is you have cancer and it's not gonna disappear. So we're gonna go ahead with the surgery. I didn't like that answer and neither did Judy. And Judy did what any good wife would do. She got another doctor. I learned in Medjugorje that Jesus wants all of us to be healed. I went to Medjugorje in love with the Blessed Mother and fearful of Jesus. I came out of Medjugorje in love with the Blessed Mother, but also with Jesus. She had brought me to her son, which is her whole reason for being here. And I learned that he wants us all well. Anybody with any malady, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial, he wants us all well. However, you can't be well until you're open, clean. And in order to be clean, an open vessel for the Holy Spirit to come into, we need to go to confession and we need to forgive. And oftentimes we have to pray for the grace to know what it is we need to forgive. And if we do that, we're an open vessel for the Holy Spirit to come in and to heal us. And I believe we can be healed. The next day I had my bloods tested and they were back to normal, which is a scientific impossibility. I get excited. I go back to the thoracic surgeon. He tells me to wait. Finally calls me into his office. And normally when they have bad news to give you, they're sitting behind the big desk. He was standing in the threshold rubbing his fingers to his chin, saying, they're gone. Now, a large nodule had disappeared. Two smaller nodules had shrunk to such an insignificant size that the thoracic surgeon, the oncologist, the uro urologist all got together. And on September 14th, the feast of the triumph of the cross, instead of having my right lung cut out, I was playing golf with Robbie and Kevin. I believe that Jesus Christ, through the intercession of the Blessed Mother, healed me in Medjugorje. And I believe he wants all of us to be healed. Mm -hmm.